realagriculture.com canola school is brought to you by Syngenta Crop Protection Canada. Denise, there's definitely been a lot of production challenges in the canola fields across Western Canada, uh, but let's look a bit forward. Uh, what are some of the things that far, uh, canola growers need to be thinking about heading into the next couple, next couple weeks or into the month? Well, certainly uh, we have had challenges and that's uh, going to be where we need to do a field by field assessment. Where are we going to make further investment? Certainly, you know, a lot of canola is starting in flower right now. So sclerotinia is uh, fairly high risk in most parts where we've had the moisture over the last 10 days and we've got that perfect condition of where we're at the right number of flowers to be at risk. So it's going to be an important intervention this year if we're going to save those yields where we think we're going to have the vigor to deliver on on good canola years. So sclerotinia, definitely scout those fields to make sure you're going to protect yourself and, and save the yield. But that's not the only threat this year come looking forward. Diamondback moth looks like it's going to be an issue for most of the prairies. And so it's going to be an important one that we watch out for. We know from early forecasts that uh, gener by the early generations that it's looking like it's a building population. But what's fascinating this year is that it might coincide with other insects that we find in canola like Liagus and like, of course, cabbage seed pod weevil. And so you're going to need to find out what those uh, right thresholds are based on combinations of insects. And so making those right choices are going to be uh, important from an insect point of view. So obviously a lot of farmers have some okay fields, some what they would consider good fields, and they also have on the other end some fields they would really consider being terrible. How, how do you go about evaluating from an agronomic perspective where you should be spending your dollars to make sure that you do, because you, you can't, this yeah. year is not a year where you can do everything you know across the board. You got to yeah. kind of pick those fields that are going to be the best ones. How do you go about doing that? Yeah, well, first of all, you've got to look at the stand and whether or not your stand has delivered. Have you got the right number of plants per square meter? And then what is the vigor? Has it been sitting in water for more than a few days? And whether or not you see that there's recovery if they it had been. So the real critical part, part is not only looking at the stand, but looking at the vigor of the stand that you presently have and whether there's any stress or any dynamics going on there. Uh, interesting because some of the parts of, for example, in the peace country, where they need to be looking is they've got the stand now, they're just waiting for rain, while in other areas we're, we're trying to get from uh, beyond those multiple rainfalls and managing those water conditions, water logging conditions. So. It's, it's a tough assessment, and if they need any help, certainly our agronomists are there to assist them and make that judgment call as well. So give them a call. Would you consider this the, one of the most challenging agronomic years that you've seen? Well, certainly I think last year we thought we were challenged, but honestly, that those were more traditional assessments we could make. Uh, frost events, it's an easy, easier thing that we've been through and understand and know once you look at the growing point, can you get recovery? Water logging uh, was a much more difficult one to understand because we don't have clear data. It was ironic because I, we were trying to fund some research along that line of excess moisture, but you don't get it as often. And so it doesn't present itself so that we can better understand what the dynamics are relative to that heavy moisture or water logging conditions. So much more difficult and challenging kinds of situations. And so now we're also seeing spin-off effects to that in terms of new diagnostic situations in the field and what are these symptoms we're seeing now and is this directly related to the water stress that we've seen. So it is not a typical situation that we've been up against and so the positive thing about canola is it's highly resilient and so we're hoping that that nature of the canola plant will help us move through this uh, situation. I've been hearing from from numerous growers you know I have three I have three leaves I've got a stick and I've got a few flowers. Yeah. Um, early bolting, you know, yeah. uh, what, what is, you know, what, what should a grower be thinking about if he's seeing, you know, you talked a little about white petals. We're yeah. seeing some really strange things in the field. Yes. Uh, what is some, does that just mean no yield? Like what is, what is some of that equal or is that too, don't make oh, that, don't the, go that far yet. Yes, exactly. In fact, and, and that was the lesson we learned from last year is that canola is resilient. It is all not just from what experience in terms of stress, but what follows that stressor. And so if we get great conditions, as we did last year, remember we got the frost events, but then we got good recovery, and it wasn't looking all that good, but then we got a great fall that translated into amazing yields. So it is absolutely premature to guess what those yields will be. But no doubt, 
growers will be concerned about what they're seeing in the field and what populations they're looking at and definitely concern relative to the premature flowering that we've seen this last year but it, it's not over until we get it in the bin so I want to be cautious on that but it will be how you make your assessment about further investment whether you invest in that fungicide and insecticide treatment. Easier said than done you know don't give up you know yeah. it's easier said than done but yeah it's important that we do you keep on monitoring those fields because yeah. as you said the canola plant compensates and if you stop paying attention you may have, you know, you, you, the crop make, you never know what's going to happen with canola. It's one of those, it's not like wheat or it's like barley. It's, it's, it's one of those plants that compensates. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why, that's what we want to stay focused on is that it's ability to rebound after stress. And so to focus on extracting the most out of that acre that you can uh, based on the present situation. Okay. Thanks a lot, Denise. Hey, thank you.